What were Jesus's last words? Go out into the whole world and make disciples. This Catholic podcast will help you respond to that call and invitation from our Lord. Together, we'll learn from leaders in the new evangelization, those out there on the front lines witnessing to God's love, and discuss tips that you can implement today. So what are you waiting for? Go make disciples. Hello, everyone. We are talking about Marian consecration. And we're doing this because this was a major part of this work of the podcast and the book. And we want to share a little bit about that with you and encourage you to do it. And we are kind of reconsecrating this podcast to Our Lady, especially this episode. And uh, why? Well, why not? But really, it's because everything needs to be done for the Lord. So probably a more accurate way of saying this is we're talking about consecration to Jesus through Mary. And um, I really feel strongly that when we consecrate something to Jesus through Mary, what we're saying is, Lord, I trust you with the work of our hands. We are willing to let go of our little kingdom, everything we've built. We place our trust in you and your sacred mother, your sacred vessel, the blessed mother. And we offer all of this to you. And uh, it was very easy. I know when we were when we were going through this uh, this process, Justin, and we were really discerning what are the right steps to take? What are we going to do next? Are we going to go to a publisher? Are we going to self-publish? How much should we charge uh-huh. for this? Do uh-huh. we want to do anything else? Um, what became very clear as we did the Marian consecration was that we needed to be radically open and vulnerable to God and to just say, Lord, we give this to you, all of our work. We don't want to be kind of like grabby and, and overly possessive and territorial about it, but just to say, you called us to do this. This is for you. And we give it back to you. Yeah. And I think one of the other things was, you know, you got to love being Catholic because you have all the saints to help you. You're not alone. And one of the things we did early on was we chose some patron saints that we thought would be great ambassadors for this project, cheerleaders, if you will, folks, people, uh, holy men and women have got to be praying for us. And we chose St. Therese of Lisieux, who's actually the patron of missionaries. Um, even though she lives such a small, humble life, um, St. Paul, uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen, and the Blessed Mother. And as we were really starting to get into the thick of this becoming something, you know, it wasn't just a pastime anymore. We were giving time, taking time away from our families, waking up early, staying up late. I think we had come to the point, uh, it might have been you that suggested, Dan, it was let's let's go the next step and and go through the consecration of Mary with this project in mind and not just our project, but our families. And I'm, I'm grateful for the consecration. Uh, I had done it before in my life previously. And, you know, when I first uh, was coming back at the church, I didn't know much about Mary. Um, Ended up marrying my wonderful wife who is very Marian in her devotion. And she would talk about Mary a lot. Say, you know, Mary has been so good to you. I'm like, what are you talking about? But then As I got to know more about the Blessed Mother and the theology behind the Blessed Mother, understanding her role in our salvation and the role she can play in our day-to-day lives, went through the consecration with Michael, Father Michael Gately's book, and um, it's uh, it really did help me cultivate a relationship with her. That I started to pray the Rosary. I didn't do that before, so it 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 did just start to make sense, Dan. You know, let's just take it the next level because what I like about consecration is it puts. The work not just in Christ's hands, but in Mary's hands to bring them to her. It's like she purifies our prayers, but she'll also help purify our work if we do that too. And I feel like what really happened during the consecration for me was it purified our work in a lot of ways. I don't know if you felt something similar. Absolutely. And what I really felt go felt happen there at that time was um, doing the Marian consecration and really reflecting on Mary's total yes, her complete yes to the Lord of saying, like, yeah, Lord, you can have it all. And her yes was so total, of course, that the Lord was made present in the world. Um, as I reflected on that and started to think of all of the things in my life and how thoroughly have I said yes to God and handed everything over to him, I realized there's a lot of things that I'm holding back from God. And so, you know, just thinking about my dreams and my desires and my plans for my future and mm-hmm. even just the language, like these are my plans for my future and my desires. And that indicated to me that I hadn't really said to God, I want your plan. I'm I'm saying yes to your plan. I want to do yes to what you want me to do. And uh, I could see so many areas of my life that I haven't 
or rather haven't had. I could see so many areas of my life that I hadn't surrendered to God. Uh, and so this was an opportunity for me to take stock of those things I was withholding and really make an intentional act of surrender and say, Lord, I give to you my future. I give to you my gifts. I give my desires, all my interests. And whatever you plan for me, I know will be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I didn't know that was what was going on so much on your end. Uh, as I was going through it on my end, the word that comes to mind is charity. Because, you know, originally going into some of this work and trying to help Mother Church be more effective at evangelization, I think it was easy to have a critical attitude. And I think a lot of folks, it's very easy for us to have critical attitudes. Oh, the church should do this. The church should do that. Um, and really that criticism uh, doesn't get us very far. And what Mary helped me to do was be more charitable. She's mother uh, of all Christians, right? We're the church. We are a family. Um, and she made me want to be more charitable with how I spoke about the church, uh, especially the church's leadership. Um, she made me want to have charity. And that applied to the language in our book. And I know that was a revelation we both had about the book as we were doing the consecration is, hey, let's let's review what we've written and make sure it's written in a charitable manner because I think it's very easy to get, like I've kind of said already, overly critical of the church and think everything's been terrible the last 30 years. Everything's just a disaster. But you and I both know from working in the church, people are trying very hard. People are trying are. very hard. The other yeah. thing is that when we look at what's going on in the church, we've got to think about much bigger things than the church's role that are affecting it. There's macro things going on in the world and the culture and society and the media different things are happening that are affecting the church. We cannot blame everything on the church and her leaders. What's more effective is let's pray and let's say, how can I help? How can I be of service? And if you look at Our Lady, I mean, gosh, the most charitable saint of all time, of course, um, Mary born without sin. So um, she really helped helped me think more about the, the word charity. Yeah, that's a great point about that really like looking at the church and, and saying, okay, oh, it's easy to complain. Well, we are the church, like we're mm -hmm. the body of Christ. And so if we're ever critical of the church, it's one of those funny things. Like anytime you point a finger at somebody else, there's three <laughs> fingers pointing back at you. Like yeah. all of the fingers are pointing back at us. We are the church. There's no, there's no excuse. Like you, there's that great story you've shared many times on here that um, you once went to somebody in church leadership and said, we need a young adult ministry. And they said, you need to start one. Like if mm -hmm. you see it, it's your job to do it. And yeah, I think that's I mean, it's true for, you know, there, there's all sorts of ways that the church can respond to our needs. But we have to remember, like, we are the church. And w the more we think of the church only as the people at the parish and the pastor and the bishop and the people working for the diocese, the more we're going to miss this central reality that living as a mem living as a Catholic in the world is to be a part of the body of Christ and to be a part of the church. And the shortcomings of the of the church are our own shortcomings to some extent, not entirely, of course, but mm -hmm. um, we have we can lift the load a little bit. So, amen to that, brother. We we are the church. We are one body. I think if if the whole church could adapt that that we mentality more and more, uh, we would help each other and uh, you know not throw the uh, baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. You know, it's made me as I reflected back because I had a big reversion back to the faith, or really. Yeah, big reversion back uh, when I was in my early 20s. And at first, I was I was critical at times, saying, how come I didn't know this? How come the church didn't teach me this? Blah, 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 blah. Well, it's made me look back and say, gosh, instead, I need to be grateful for all the many seeds planted, the, the priests and nuns who loved me, my parents who brought me to baptism, first communion, confirmation, the great people I had, the examples of marriage, and, uh, you know, I think back more and more, I think shame on me for being so critical. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I had a big role to play in my drifting from the church, you know, taking a break from God when I got to college. You know, that was my decision, right? Um, but because of those seeds of faith that had been planted within me, um, through those things, you know, like CCD, uh, you know, Catholic school, those traditional methods, you know, we cannot just, yeah, throw everything in, and say everything's ineffective. We need to just build upon the great work that has been done before us and try to think, where can I make a difference? I think St. Therese of Lisieux, who's also very merry and helped us with that because she's the little way. She's not there thinking, I'm going to solve the problem. She's there. She, she's like, what can I do, right? She was belittled in her community, 
<laughs> people didn't like her. She thought, well, I'm just going to do small things with great love. She just always thought, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And now she's one of the most uh, notable saints in in recent history and maybe of all time in the church. She has more devotees than, you know, she's she's one of the tops. So look at look at the power of the little way and just doing doing the little bit that you can. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's nothing, nothing too small to be done well for God. And that's really what I think consecration is about. It's to say, Lord, everything I do is for you through our blessed mother, because she's the, the model of a disciple. Um, there's a, a great passage in, or I think it's in multiple gospels, but I know it's in Luke's gospel and, um, Jesus is in a house and the crowds are saying to him, Lord, your mother and your brothers are here. Um, and he said, who is my mother and my brother? My mother and my brother are those who hear the word of God and act upon it. And um, is it really what he's saying is what it means to be a disciple is to hear my word, to keep it in your heart and to act upon it. And we know from earlier in Luke's gospel, when Mary heard the word of the God of God announced her, her she heard the word of the angel. And then she heard Jesus speaking in the temple. Um, she heard the words of, um, of Simeon and, um, the, 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 so at the presentation, she heard the two prophets in the temple speak and really prophesy about the life of Jesus. And she kept those words in her heart and pondered them and acted upon them. And so um, if people wonder like, well, can I just consecrate myself to Jesus? And, and my response is, yeah, you are. And at least for me, when I, you know, I, I have a, um, a Christocentric approach, like appropriately Christocentric understanding of salvation and that, yeah, everything comes from Jesus. Everything is like, it's because of his, yes, it's his sacrifice. Um, and Mary is the model to us of what it means to follow the Lord and to say yes to him and to surrender our will to his. And, uh, so when we're saying we consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary, it's really what we're acknowledging. It's like Mary is showing us how to be a disciple, to, to give everything to Jesus. And so in the same way she gave him everything, even in like giving mm -hmm. him her own life, uh, to carry his life and to nourish him. Um, that's what he, we're called to do. And when we do that, when we say, yes, the Lord is made present in the world. Yeah. No, Mary's the best, but Mary's the best. And knowing her more will help you be, uh, be the best disciple that you can be. And it's really hard to do it without her. I mean, we weren't, our Lord didn't want us to do it without her because he gave St. John at the foot of the cross. He gave Mary to her. So he said, you guys will need my mother's help. He did not want us to do it without her. So that's the beautiful gift we have in Mary. So maybe, Dan, we can talk a little bit now about the how. What does it look like? You know, and so there's lots of great resources. Uh, most folks listening probably know, um, you know, St. Louis de Montfort, the, the original 33-day um, preparation. Father Michael Gately's uh, version came out uh, in recent years. Um, St. Maximilian Colby has a, has a guide. There's, there's many um, out there. Uh, we chose Father Michael Gately's because I think we had both read it previously. We both were familiar with it. Um, and basically each day has a, a reflection on, and focused on some Marian saints of recent memory. One of them is St. Maximilian Colby, St. Teresa of Calcutta, um, St. Pope John Paul II. And uh, Dan, help me out on the fourth, the fourth saint. Probably St. Louis de Montfort, right? I think, yes, you're right. Yeah. St. Louis de Montfort, yes. Um, and you reflect, uh, there's a reflection on, a, on an essential Marian teaching. I mean, Mariology is a, is a whole theological area of study in, in its own right. And then you, you have some pondering reflection questions, how does this apply to you? And then you, you say a prayer. And so that's, and then you consecrate at the end. So each day what I would do is I would just, uh, I was working on exercising for two during that time. So I'd wake up and I'd go to exercise. And then while I was out there exercising, I would, I would read it pray about it, think about it. And then uh, I think you and I just kind of kept each other accountable. We were all on the same day. And each day I just kept the prayer intention the same of for our work together and our families, consecrating them to Jesus through Mary. And um, that's, that's what it was like on my end, Dan. What was it yeah. like on your end procedurally? <laughs> Pretty similar. I mean, it, yeah, the, the book is, what I love about that book is it's, it's approachable. It's easy. Um, Louis de Montfort's is great. It's very thorough, but it can be l so long that it's difficult to keep up with it. And, um, I, I don't think anybody would have a hard time keeping up with Father Gately's book. And so I would, I'd really recommend that one. I, I may recommend them all, but that one is w w the next time I do a consecration, I'm, I'm going to reuse the 33 days to morning glory. And I would recommend it to everybody. 
Um, but yeah, it was, it was an opportunity on a regular basis to stop and reflect and say, okay, what have I not given to God? Is there anything that I can give more to him? How can I trust him more? How can I walk in humility? How can I be open to his word? Um, so I'd say my, my simple, humble advice is to just start. Um, and, you know, there's, there's nice days to start on so that you end on a Marian feast day. But any day is a good start, a good, a good opportunity mm-hmm. to start. So if you feel like the Lord's calling you to this, you can probably get it in your Kindle for, for uh, rather I, inexpensive. He actually sells it super cheap on Amazon. It, it was like under seven bucks <laughs> last time I saw. And, yeah. you know, I like what you said about approachability, Dan. And I, I really needed his version when I was tiptoeing into Marian devotion because I had a lot of bad uh, theology in my head about Mary, uh, mm-hmm. hanging around some non Catholic thinking for a little bit. And that kind of made me not appreciate Mary and not want to draw close to Mary. So that book was like a gateway for me into understanding Mary, uh, the gately gateway. Maybe he should coin that phrase. Oh, that's a good but, one, man. But it, probably... it, it got me tiptoeing in understanding her. And then I was like, by the end, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to do this. I don't, I don't think I fully know what I'm doing, but I know that I need to trust Mary as my mother. So it was the perfect starting point. And now, I mean, I just, I don't know why God is so good to us. You know, I mean, I, the rosary has become a big staple in my life and I never thought I'd be a daily rosary prayer. I I thought it was like overwhelming. I thought I would never pray the rosary, but Mary changed my heart uh, and her spouse, the Holy Spirit. So, so folks, uh, you will not regret drawing closer to Mary. It's going to make you love Jesus more. And of course, love St. Joseph more, and he will love you. He will help you love Mary more. So. Yeah, stay yep. close to Jesus' parents. They're going to help you follow their son. <laughs> there we go. Well, that's probably a great, a great spot to to take a break and stop. And so we encourage everyone: uh, consecrate or reconsecrate yourself to Jesus through Mary. And next and time you do work. a consecration, yeah, uh, everything, everything. Next time we do a consecration, we will let you know so that you can do it with us. God bless you, everyone. Peace. <laughs>